Uh, everybody has heard of Tay-Sachs disease, which is the original disease for which screening became available in the early 1970s. Uh, the first testing was done by an enzyme assay, and that was a very much a grassroots ac um, activity in the Jewish community where thousands turned out to be screened. And since that time, the number of babies born with Tay-Sachs disease in the Jewish community has decreased by 90%. It was a very effective campaign. It still is a well-known disease, and pretty much everybody of Jewish descent knows that they should be screened, and so do their doctors. The problem with Tay-Sachs is that it is not just a Jewish disease. It occurs in other communities, and with intermarriage, that is becoming more of an issue because some places screen only with DNA testing. And the DNA testing has mutations or gene alterations that are geared to the Jewish community and not the community in general, not the general population. So if someone who is not Jewish is screened without the enzyme, you could miss that person as being a carrier. And one of the things we're undertaking in our department here right now is a research study in the Irish community because we have seen a number of babies born with Tay-Sachs disease to Irish families in Philadelphia, and we want to establish the carrier rate for Tay-Sachs and the Irish, and then provide guidelines for screening the Irish population. It also occurs in the French Canadians and Cajun populations. So my feeling is that ultimately Tay-Sachs, while it is considered a Jewish genetic disease, really should be one where the population is screened with the enzyme test, which is not a difficult test and not a very expensive test. So that is the most well-known of the Jewish genetic diseases. But Gaucher disease is the most common Jewish genetic disease, with a carrier rate of 1 in 15. And that disease it's important to know about because there are potential treatments for that disease. So it may actually be more suitable for newborn screening to find children with Gaucher disease and then to monitor them and ultimately treat them if they need it. But it's a very variable condition, can be very severe. So we do screen for that. And that's another reason why we do counseling because in the course of our screening, we have actually identified two healthy young adults with Gaucher disease who are both referred for treatment and monitoring. Uh, familial dysautonomia is another common Jewish genetic disease. It can also be very severe. Uh, people can live to their 40s and 50s with it, but they get extremely sick quite frequently and end up in the hospital. And many of them are significantly disabled. As they get older, they begin to have vision problems, kidney problems. They always have problems with their uh, regulation of body functions like blood pressure, heart rate, and they can have crises, and nobody really understands why these crises develop, but they get really sick with high temperature, high blood pressure, high heart rate, and often that can lead to hospitalizations. So the diseases are variable. We have selected diseases based on criteria provided through the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics, where the diseases are severe, the carrier rate is greater than 1 in 100 in the Jewish community, and the detection rate is over 90%. So we give consideration to a lot of different diseases and only select ones for which there is a good reason to do the screening, which we recommend preconceptually, as in before you get pregnant and preferably at the time or before you get married, so that you and your partner know what your status is.